Happy Monday, everybody, and welcome to Recast Live. I am your host, Kristen Brumbaugh, and uh, for those of you that I've not had the pleasure of speaking with or might be new to the broadcast here today, um, I am the host of the Recast Group. Um, I've been in the real estate industry since 2005 and spent that time working in many facets of real estate, um, all including new construction, general brokerage, um, marketing and now my husband and i also own a real estate brokerage here in south carolina with a little over 200 agents so the reason why i have this group is because i enjoy working with agents all across the country to help them grow their business to help them um work through the things in life that might be holding us back and help holding us back from being our best and most successful selves. And um, so, yeah, I bring all that together in this group. Today's topic is recalibrating your marketing in a changing market. And we know that the past couple months have been awkward, right? Um, you know, we've gone through the past two years of just hustle, 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 because deals have been flying off the shelves, basically. And really, this year has shown us that, okay, we need to start to find those basics again. We need to, need to start to get back into the habits and routines of creating predictable business again. Um, as this market starts to normalize and to really settle back into something that is kind of more appropriate to what we are normally seeing over the years, it's time to really evaluate what it is that we're doing in our business and in our routines to bring in that business. Now, that said, you probably put in a lot of work at the beginning of this year thinking, okay, this is how the market's been. This is the kind of marketing I need to do. This is the path we're going to take. And then the world flipped upside down again and the market's not what it was and it's a little bit different and maybe you're trying to figure out like okay well how do i make this work right i don't want to have to redo everything i don't want to have to just completely start from scratch um with all the all of the the you know things that you put in place right so that's what we're going to talk about today about recalibrating your market in the changing market kind of doing it in congruence with the business that you're doing. So if you're watching this with me live on Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern, drop a live or a good afternoon in the chat. Maybe if you're on the West Coast, it's still morning. So uh, whatever it works for your time zone. But let me know you're here with me live. If you're watching this later in replay, then drop a replay in the chat. Just lets me know when everybody's watching, your engagement, your likes, your hearts, your comments, they really are the motivation that keeps me driven on doing these Monday classes. And um, it's really the feedback as well. So let me know that what I'm talking about is important to you and resonates with you. So just let me know in the comments. I do have those pulled up here. I'll be able to, to check them out as we continue on. Let me ah, open that up. All right. So today's topic, recalibrating your market in a changing market, um, your marketing in a changing market. I have a number of things to cover here. I have my notes, so that way I don't forget anything of you guys. We have eight things in particular, so get out your notebook. Be prepared to write some things down, and I will recap them at the end as well, um, but let's dive in. So the first thing I want you to do is to sit down. You're going to have to set aside a little bit of time for this and just sit down and take a look at your marketing and just look at it in detail with the thought process of, how does this speak to the current buyers and sellers? Is the language I'm using, is the messaging I'm using, and this is one and two are kind of similar, but is the messaging that I'm using relevant to what we're seeing in today's market? Um, also, you know, is it helpful? Is it a value? So take a look at your current marketing and change it up to, so that you're speaking the language of current buyers and sellers so that you're actually seeming relevant and you're not using outdated language. Number two, evaluate your current messaging. This is a time frame where 
it can be scary for buyers and sellers. Sellers could be fearful that they have missed their opportunity to sell and get the best possible dollar. And maybe they have, and maybe they haven't. Um, and buyers could be worried that they might not be able to get the home that they want because of rising interest rates. But taking a look at your messaging and thinking, does my message, you know, does it elicit fear or does it elicit comfort? And really looking at what that messaging in your marketing is saying to your potential prospects. Now, also, I want you to look at other types of messaging. Look at the words you're using on your website or the, um, you know, the headlines or the blog posts, whatever you're using on your website. Look at your property descriptions. Right now, we're in such a, a rapidly changing market that the property description you wrote for a house a month ago, if it's still on the market, might not be relevant. You know, right now you might not be saying won't last. <laughs> depending on the price point, depending on the area, um, you might be, you know, saying that it's, you know, you, you just need to look at that messaging and figure out like, okay, am I being truthful here? Am I being, am I giving the right value? Am I saying the right things? that actually reflect today's market. So make sure you're checking your property descriptions, make sure, making sure you're checking your website copy um, and your social media messaging as well. Your videos, you might have videos that if you do a lot of video, you might have videos that you did earlier in the year that aren't really relevant to where you're at now with your clients and with your customers. And so maybe do an update video, um, you know, tag the original video and say, you know, update, from this or part two, um, you know, or this fast forwarded market updates, part two, that kind of thing. Um, so make sure that all of your messaging is relevant. Um, Justin, I saw you asked which camera I use. I'm actually using my iPhone using the app Camo, C-A-M-O, um, because it's the easiest and um, the most predictable camera I have. So um, I'm actually using my iPhone plugged into uh, my laptop with the Camo app, C-A-M-O. Thanks for asking though. Great question. Um, okay. So number one, take a look at your current marketing, um, making sure that it's speaking the right language. And then number two is checking your messaging in all the areas where you have words, where you have copy. Um, you have uh, like your property descriptions, your website, your social media, um, check your bio in social media. If you do a lot of social media, making sure that you have up-to-date bios um, with today's market, making sure that you don't have any outdated information. Number three, focus on pains and dreams. So this is kind of a marketing 101 basic is focusing on their pains and their dreams, uh, no matter who it is you're trying to target. And that is so relevant still now. Um, when you are speaking to somebody's dreams in your marketing, when you're speaking or, or to their fears, and some people are comfortable speaking to fears and some people are more comfortable speaking to dreams and both ways work. Um, but when you're talking up the, the, messaging or the marketing that you're doing, you're going to want to focus in either on their dreams or their fears. So maybe, and we, we would have ads that we would write um, that would focus in on more of like looking for, you know, all the bells and whistles, looking for a pool. That's, those are dreams, right? We want to live on the lake. Those are dreams. Or um, do you need more square footage? Um, are you feeling a little cramped? where you're living now, those are pains, right? So look and really decipher in on what the pains and the fears are, or the, the pains, fears, and then the dreams are of your um, perfect client, of your ideal client, and make sure that your messaging is attaching to one of those. So that way, because when you do that, whenever you speak to either their pains and fears or to their dreams, you're going to have some winning messages there. You're going to have some winning copy. Your, your marketing is going to resonate that much better because you are speaking directly to their emotion. People buy on emotion. I think most realtors know that, that as much as we like to think that they're buying on logic, they buy on emotion. So the more you can tap into that emotion, the better off you're going to be. 
Number four, educate yourself. I did a mindset course this morning, and um, one of the things we talked about was sharpening your axe. And the more often you can educate yourself, the more often you can be aware of the market trends, of the data, um, the better off you're going to be. Take that to the next level, though, and make sure you're educated in your, your own skills so that you can better serve your clients, whether that's your negotiating skills, whether that's um, your marketing skills, whether whatever that is, making sure that you're educated um, and that you're educating yourself. Um, if you haven't speak, if you haven't experienced a change in the market, if you didn't go through the recession, if you didn't go through, you know, the tail end of the recession where it changed back to a positive, if you haven't experienced any kind of change in a market, maybe you got in the business in the last three years or so, um, then speak to somebody who has find a mentor, find a coach um, who has been in this market or has been in a changing market. So that way you can pick their brain a little bit more on what you should be doing, what to expect specifically in your market is always helpful. If you can find kind of a mentor or your broker even um, to help get some insight on what to expect on and on how they've handled things in the past. Um, Always be looking for opportunities to learn something new. I am, my husband tells me all the time that in, in the most loving way, but I am such a nerd because I love to learn. I am that person who likes to go and study for the test. I am that person who likes to read self-help books just for the fun of it um, because I love to learn things. Um, and I think that's, I'd like to think that's a really great trait uh, because it keeps me educated and constantly trying to grow and progress in everything that I try to do. So always look for opportunity to learn things, whether that's in your experiences and books and other people's experiences, always be looking to learn. Number five, be a source of expert info. Okay. So here are some great things that I want you guys to keep in mind. Um, you can your goal is to get people to know, like, and trust you, right? Um, and you can't do that if you're hiding. And one of the things that I tell people all the time, one, I love video because it allows people to see your personality Two, you have to be creating conversations. So you can't go out there and be a secret agent. I'm sure you guys have heard it before. That's not a new phrase, but you need to be out there creating conversations with new people. Your database should be constantly growing, whether you're buying leads, whether you're um, doing open houses, whether you're just talking to everybody in the grocery store, whatever your mode or method is, I want you to be creating conversations daily. So I have a few ideas of things you can do to um, be that source of expert info to the people you're creating conversations with, because you want to bring them a lot of value. The more value you can bring, the more you're going to be seen as the expert in real estate. You're going to be the expert realtor in their eyes. So some different ways that you can share that expert info and you can be that source that they go to all the time. This is where you might want to write stuff down. Um, workshops webinars, social media, blogs, podcasts, videos. Uh, I think I said webinars twice, but I had it written down twice for some reason, direct mail. So sending out direct mail with updates, uh, doing webinars. I know that a lot of agents have done like seminars, home buying seminars, home selling seminars, workshops, that kind of thing. Um, that's always a great way to get in front of people, especially whenever you can um, combine it with like a lender uh, and you can kind of bring that element of we're going to bring you some financing updates because that's a big one right now as rates rise. And as we're experiencing the rising interest rate situation, um, you know, that's something that creates some fear in people. And anytime they can get answers or kind of get some uh, sense of relief about what's going on or some comfort, then it's a great foundational relationship building opportunity. Um, so workshops, webinars, social media, blogs, podcasts, videos, and direct mail are all great ways to be a source of expert um, info to be able to showcase the information that you have. Explore potential niches. Um, where is your market going? Do you see the potential for foreclosures coming up soon or pre-foreclosures? Do you see 
um, the potential for new construction to rise. I think rising costs are kind of affecting that all across the board. Um, but for example, whenever we went through the recession in 2008, um, it allowed a window in my market for new construction to really boom. They were able to really put out a lot of inventory, um, really get some great new home buyer, first time um, tax credits. I remember the first time home buyer tax credit. Um, and so there was a lot of opportunity for new construction in our area and it allowed it to really boom in the recession then. So look for potential niches in your market. What's going to really take off? What has the potential to take off in your area? And what can you do now to prepare yourself for that? For example, do you need to brush up on REOs? Do you need to brush up on your construction knowledge? And I speak to new construction because I did spend a large portion of time in my real estate career in new construction. But one of the great things that we did in our area was we started doing um, new construction building tours and we got together with the builders and um, they would allow us to tour their homes as they were being built. So we would get a home that was in framing and that, you know, we would get the superintendent, the builder there to kind of walk us through quality construction and we would get something in sheetrock, you know, we would get the different stages of new construction and it would allow us to educate the real estate community. And then we also expanded that into um, the customers, the, the the home or the buyers and people who are interested, we started doing them publicly. Um, it allowed us to better educate people on the process of building a home. Like I said, new construction was really big during the recession in my area. So it allowed us to kind of bring this element of expertise and uh, really educate people on the process, not only of buying, but also of building and what quality looked like. Um, so what is a potential niche in your area? that you could be focusing in on to allow your business to grow that maybe you need to brush up your skill set on. Um, number nine, turn inquiries into content. So as a realtor, you probably get asked some of the same questions over and over and over again, right? And a lot of times we repeat ourselves and that's okay because you have a new client and you kind of have, have a spiel. And that's, that's perfectly fine. But I encourage you to take those commonly asked questions and create content. Maybe create a Canva, um, you know, Instagram size image that you can use on all, all your different platforms of an FAQ. Maybe it's FA, FAQ Friday and you post a um, question, a frequently asked question and the response. Maybe you do a video and you say, I get asked this one a lot. And I just thought it might be helpful to come on here and share with you guys, with your audience, um, some of the questions that I get asked frequently that, you know, I feel like could really benefit from you guys. And so share one or two or three questions, just a short little video to engage with your audience to further educate them. Take the stuff that you talk about all day long. Guys, you are living, breathing real estate. And it's hard sometimes for us as realtors to get out of that bubble, for us to realize that not everybody else knows the lingo, that not everybody else is living, breathing it, and is not as they're not as aware as we are of the changes in the industry. So anything you can do to kind of share that and kind of normalize it and, um, you know, put it into um, kind of a... I forget the word I'm looking for, but just kind of bring it down to like normal language, I think can always help and really help humanize you when it comes to trying to get people to know, like, and trust you. And then number eight, check your analytics um, and double down on what works. So if you're not using Google Analytics in your website or tracking your metrics on your social media, then I encourage you to start doing so. Make sure that you're, you have um, on Instagram, if you're, if you're using Instagram a lot, make sure that you have it as a business profile because that's going to allow you to better track those analytics and those insights um, on your business pages, on your website. If you're doing ads, make sure that you're checking all of your channels and you're tracking your analytics and figure out where people seem to be resonating with you the most. And then once you realize that, put a lot of energy, take, take a lot of energy. Don't worry about spreading yourself across the board right away. If you're trying to really boost up your business, Put your money and your efforts into what's already starting to work, where you're already starting to have a pop. 
And you're going to find that that's going to give you the fastest return as well, usually. So um, and if you want more, guys, if you if you want to talk more about what you're already doing and what's working and you just want some like feedback on how to make that work better or you want some feedback on should you continue down that route, that's where I can come in. Guys, we can hop on a game plan call completely free, 20, 30 minutes. Sometimes I go longer um, call, depending on what we're talking about. But it's a completely free call that we can hop on. Talk about what you're doing. I'm not going to try to sell you on that call, guys. We can talk about what you're doing and I can help give you some feedback or some insight based on my experience, based on the knowledge I have to help guide you in the right direction. Um, so if you're interested in that, drop game plan in the chat because I can help you there. I'll come back and I'll message you and we'll get that scheduled. Um, but just having that understanding of measuring what you're already doing and putting your eggs, more eggs in that basket. I'm not saying you got to put all the eggs in the basket, but put more eggs in the basket that's working, right? Um, so those are my nine things to help you recalibrate. And like I said, I'll go back and guys, while I'm going back through, I'd love to hear if any of these things really stuck out to you or if um, what your biggest takeaway was from the nine things that I talked about. Again, we had um, looking at your current marketing, making sure that it's speaking to the current buyers and sellers, evaluating your messaging on your property descriptions, on your marketing, on your website, um, you know, on your videos, things like that. Um, number three was focusing on pain points and dreams, really making sure that you're speaking to their dreams or to their pain or to their fear. Um, because when you do that, when you hone in on that emotion, that is really what helps them be more attracted to you because it's like you're speaking to them. Like you understand them, you get them, right? Anytime you see something like an ad or you see what's likely to make you buy, somebody who seems like they get you, right? So making sure that you're putting stuff out there makes it that makes them feel like you get them. Um, number four, educating yourself, sharpen that ax. Always be looking for opportunities to learn. Um, be a source of expert info. Um, from this one, I meant to ask you guys earlier, I would love to hear who already is doing one of these things, the workshops, the webinars, the social media, blogs, podcasts, videos, um, direct mail. Who here is already doing something on that list and how's it working for you? I would really love to know. Um, explore potential niches, understand where your local market is going and what do you do? What can you do now to help better prepare yourself and position yourself to be able to take advantage of the pop that's going to come out of that? Um, turn your, inquiry, your, your questions, your FAQs into content. Utilize the questions that you have on repeat, that spiel that you have on repeat, put it online because with the more people who can see that, the more, the broader you're going to send out your messaging and the more opportunities you're going to create for yourself. Remember, more opportunities equal more closing, more people equal more opportunities. So the more people you can get in front of, the more people you can talk to, the better off you're going to be. Um, and then checking your metrics, making sure you're paying attention to all of your insights, your analytics, things like that, and doubling down on what's working already. Um, if As long as that's where you want to be. But it depends on what your goals are. Everybody's marketing plan is going to look a little bit different. Um, that's why I love what I do. That's why I love to get on the calls that I get on, because everybody's plan is going to look a little bit different. We might look, we might use some of the same tools. We might use some of the same strategies, but the reasoning is going to be different because who you're trying to target might be different than who your neighbor is trying to target. And the way that you're going to interact with them is going to be different because we're all unique human beings. That's why I love marketing. That's because it is predictable yet um, uh, spont spontaneous at the same time. Um, so if that's something, you know, if this helped you guys, I felt like it was a really intriguing um, slot of information, if you will, uh, because I think right now it can be kind of sometimes you just need a checklist, right? You just need someone to say, I need, you need to go do A, B, and C right now. In your business, you should be doing A, B, and C if you want to best prepare yourself for the next 6, 12, 18 months. And as realtors, because we are um, notoriously on the go, sometimes just having that A, B, and C, 
This is what I got to do today. This is, you know, this is my checklist. We are independent contractors, but there's a large amount of us who just need a checklist, right? And um, this, you know, this felt like a really great way to help realtors in general, to help people like you guys sit down and say, okay, here's how I make sure I'm set you know, and in the right mindset and in the right position to be prepared for the next six to 12 months. So that's all I have for you guys today. I hope it was really helpful. Again, if you guys want to hop on a game plan call, talk about what you're doing, get some feedback on what you're doing already and figure out a new path forward or a fresh path forward. Um, maybe you need help sweeping the leaves off the path just to figure it out. Then I'm happy to help do that. Drop game plan in the chat. And if you guys, of course, need anything else, feel free to give me a message here on Facebook or shoot me an email. I think most of you have my email now, um, but I will talk to you guys later. And thank you so much for joining me today on Recast Live.